Hi there, it's Carla again. This is day three of me talking about Traeger. Um, and so people say, well, what is Traeger? What happens? What, do you, what, do, what, what, what type of work is this? Um, and so some really scientific -y people have, um, have big words that explain what Traeger is. Um, neuromuscular re-education, physio-psycho-integration, um, trauma work, trauma release work. Um, and that's all fine and well, but it doesn't really give you much information to go on unless you're really brainy. And then if you're really brainy, you're like, oh yeah, I get that. But like, I'm not really brainy and most of my people aren't really brainy, no offense, but not. So well, some of you are, but so my lovely Bella, which was um, my black lab, it was with me for about 14 years. Um, I had, her, I got her as an eight week old and at about nine weeks, she started giving me a different ex experience or a different, um, a different explanation about maybe what Trey does. And so I noticed a pattern in her through her whole life and it started very young. Um, she would um, get herself in trouble, like she would flip upside down behind the couch and get stuck. Um, stressful, you know, she got her head stuck in a bucket one time and had to cut it off her. <laughs> but there was, it was like maybe a treat at the bottom of the bucket. It was like a, you know, thing and she put her head in it and she came to me and she was like, and it was all like fogging up and I'm like oh my god and I could not get it off for the life of me her shit. probably if I would have just gotten the magical angle and pulled her ears and gotten a certain amount of tension just right it would have slid off but I, I couldn't get it off so I had to cut it off her. and so after all these little traumatic situations as an adult dog getting stuck um, down an embankment and couldn't get up by herself um, all these little stresses, these tensions, these, this like fight or flight, you knew that chemicals were going through her body. It was kind of an oh shit moment. Always when that resolved, she always shook it off. Literally whole body shake. Even as a little girl, all the way up till she was 14, she would shake it off. She would like, the trauma would be over and she would be like, whew, and she'd like do a whole body shake. She was like, and she trot off to the next thing. And it was like behind her, gone. And I'm like, oh, that's just what I'm doing with Traeger. Trauma happens to the body. We're humans. We don't shake it off. We just trot on to the next event and more trauma happens. We don't shake it off. More trauma happens. We develop these compensation patterns, this limp, alcoholism, overeating, all these things to kind of help like soothe or comfort the fact that we haven't shaken it off. And I'm like, I'm just helping people shake off trauma. That's it. So we play with the tissue, we play with the muscle. Um, we play with the brain that is all integrated into the muscle. We play with the fascia and there's lots of wiggling and jiggling and rocking and rolling and this shaking off and this shaking off can be very big. It can be very like lively and animated on the tissue in the body. And sometimes uh, some of Milton Traeger, um, Dr. Traeger's videos don't get published like because if a person saw it they'd be like oh my god like that's so much movement and it's so aggressive but it's all with a feel and it's only if the body allows that much movement and so the shake off is within the body's range of what it is free to shake off and that's where sensitivity in your hands comes of like knowing when you're pushing that edge of too much and not enough and sometimes we make mistakes we do too much and it creates another little um um uh attention or a trauma in the body because you asked it to do too much it's almost like we i call it a little bit of a healing crisis so 
our animals do this. The horses will snort and blow um, and yawn when they are releasing. Um, or sometimes a head shake as well. Um, Bonnie and I just had a weird thing where we got jumped by another dog on a walk in Main Street, on Main Street in Norway, and um, the dog attacked. And, <laughs> and Bonnie's scrappy, she knew how to handle herself. And um, I had a weapon, I had the end of my, um, my retractable leash that I kept whacking the dog on the head and telling it to let go, bad dog. And um, it was over. The dog looked at me like, you know, you're kind of interrupting my game plan. And I was like, well, yeah, you're being a snotty dog. Get. And the owner came. Oh, my God, I'm so sorry. You know, it was this thing. And um, Bonnie was like, Phew. immediately when it was all said and done, shook it off. Full body shake, head shake, full body shake. So in the animal kingdom with my dogs, it's this common theme. So interestingly enough, in that situation, I got to watch because Bonnie, it was like all done. She shook it off. She was like on to the next adventure. Meanwhile, I'm like, oh my God, what just happened? It took the whole rest of my walk with her for me to kind of like get it into my plan. I'm like, that was scary. I've never had anything like that happen before. I had a hard time shaking it off. I did fine, but it was just like, she was like, way more over it and faster than I was. She had, it was just bam, she shook it off. She was done with it. I have taken longer. Um, so it's just interesting. And so um, that shaking off piece is something that you can do in your own life. Um, sometimes we do it better than others, but it can be like a physical shake it off. Um, and so what that may look like, again, in the mentastics uh, or the mental gymnastics or the self-care movements. Um, and so, you know, like I have been doing, I've always got dirty hands because I'm always working, but uh, I stabbed myself with a screwdriver and I have a little owie. And so I have been using this hand differently for the last week because my little owie is healing. And so shaking that off is simply, I'm gonna try to step back. So shaking that off is this like as if i was bonnie or bella the dogs physically shaking it off and going within the range that is comfortable it severe trauma and i've seen this i've seen a person fall and whack the back of her head on a, a heating register at a traeger training and it was a pretty substantial head injury and immediately the instructor came over and supported her, held her, weighed her head, and offered ever so slight movement um, to support shaking off of that trauma. Very, 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 very small. And in some situations, it's the bodies are so traumatized, you know, the trauma is so significant that it, no movement is able to happen, but it, the intention of movement. And so, um, one process that we do as practitioners to learn from each other and to learn this experience is we just um, make contact with the body and in our mind's eye we offer movement to that body but actually no physical movement it's the potential of movement it's a fantasy of movement and really cool stuff happens with that so um even if the trauma is so significant um um, even if the injury is so significant that in that move movement that is noticeable isn't able to happen an attempt at movement even if it's in the mind's eye is beneficial and it's getting you started in the right direction so always honoring and respecting where your limitations are how significant is the trauma what movement is going to be comfortable is going to feel like ease is going to feel safe um, and playing within that range. And so my hand's pretty good. This is fine. I'm able to give this a good free jostle. And so again, playing with movement, all different ranges, and you can see the arm moves. Everyone's like, oh! I can't tell you how many women that I've worked on and they're like, oh my God, my ass is jiggling. I'm like, yaha, we like that. Jiggle away. There's nothing more boring than an ass that doesn't jiggle to a trachea therapist. <laughs> it all needs to jiggle. You know, it, um, 
I've worked on some incredibly strong men and women, but men like professional athletes and very, very powerful men. And yes, they, they have injuries that we're addressing sometimes, but also their muscles are extremely healthy and light and fluffy, but they're extremely powerful as well. Like my horse's hind end, very, very, very strong muscle. Um, can kick a hole in the wall in three seconds flat. And when they tip their toe up and give me their hind end, it's just a bowl of jello. And so it's the jello that we're looking for um, because when that muscle stays engaged and is tight and is not the bowl of jello and is not soft and jiggly and wiggly, tension is living in the body. Tension has taken up housing and is just a matter of time before injury and dysfunction happens. So engage the muscle, work really hard, be strong and let there be a release. And when we miss the piece of the release of the uh, shaking off of the trauma or shaking off of the effort, fight or flight or whatever, or, you know, needing to lift something really heavy or a hockey player that's like slamming somebody into the glass, all that fun stuff, like they don't go home and have the muscle engaged with the same force that it took to slam someone into the glass. Their muscles are actually very soft and fluffy. And so that's helped. You know, ability to engage and ability to release completely. Again, that's trauma. Trauma is like, whoa, oh my gosh, we're fighting off of a pit bull, which it's not pit bull's fault. I love pit bulls, it's handler's fault. Um, to like, oh, I wonder if there's a chipmunk around here. So it's full on um, engagement and contraction and effort to nothing, shaking it off. And so it's when we get hung up in the engagement that we get into trouble. And so learning some tools to help shake it off and um, the movement or visualizing the muscle, um, the joint, the tissue, the fascia, the soup. I, I like to think of it as this soup and we're like, we're so much fluid that it is just such a, a soupy um, mixture in us jostling around, just playing with that imagination um, can be super helpful. And so, playing in the car this is a really easy thing to do and i haven't quite mastered yet how to do a full body but we're going to get there because i'm going to do some big mentastics here at some point not today though and so this movement see all this is happening and if i turn around you can see a little bit the ripples that are happening up into my shoulder i'm kind of close i don't know how to and get the angle perfect. And so you can do this while you're in the car. You can get both of them going. It's as if your hands are wet and you're just flopping the water off. You can be real small if that's comfortable. How low can it go? <laughs> What could be less? That's always a question Milton Triggers asks. What could be less than that? And half of that. What could be easier? What could be softer? So I'm still playing with a little movement. And so if you had a broken arm, you could probably do this amount of movement. And in time, you can come up days, weeks, and if tiny, tiny amount of movement doesn't work, you just hang with it in your mind. And so I've met professional, very talented athletes who have been injured and not able to compete in their sport, horseback riding, hockey, and on the couch, they keep doing it, they keep practicing because the mind and the body, like if you're doing it in your mind and you're convincing, your body's along for the ride. And so they're able to get back on horses after being laid up and not have missed a beat because they stayed engaged in the mind and they kept running it in the mind. So it's pretty cool stuff. It opens up like lots of possibilities. And so playing with this big movement, I have a lot of movement here. And hanging with it for like a boring amount of time. It's interesting, just like you have nothing to do but to like 
let movement happen here. Giving yourself that time, that self-care. Have you been at the keyboard all day long? Have you been driving? Have you been writing? Did you just have an almost fall? Have you been shoveling? Have you been tossing hay? Have you created a little bit of a trauma? Shake it off. I love shaking it off and I don't like when I don't shake it off because I feel like crap emotionally and physically. Shaking it off is like when I commit in to caring for myself and utilizing the tools I know, I'm like my best medicine for myself. And you can do that for yourself as well. It's just about learning some different tricks, different ways of utilizing movement. And also yoga and stretching and meditation and breath and massage, all awesome tools too. This is different, um, offering something different. I am not as flexible as some of my yoga friends, but they don't have as much range of motion as I have. So it's one isn't better than the other. It's just offering a different tool for your toolbox um, of ways of creating ease and um, shifting trauma in your body. There you have it. So hopefully tomorrow we get out and play with Tarzan, the horse. I would love to um, get doing a little body work and I don't have a person body. Um, so there's Bonnie and there's Tarzan and there's Fantast and there's Rodeo. So hopefully we'll be seeing Rodeo is the mini cow, Fantast and Tarzan are the two horses, Bonnie's the dog. So hopefully um, we'll be playing a little Traeger um, with those folks, those critters. So find the awesomeness in every moment and shake it off and have a great evening.